Okay, guys, I'm here today with Harry Akins. Huge honor for me. Guys, I think most of you know who Harry is, but for those who doesn't know, he's the third American black belt from Hickson Gracie. And he was the main instructor of Hickson Gracie HQ back in the 2000s in the California yep. right, area. And uh, guys, today Harry is going to show us here uh, how to do the perfect way to escape with the elbow escape from mount. And uh, Harry, I, I love the elbow escape, so I'm super excited to learn. And I think like it is the the one or one of the most efficient ways to escape from all, right? Yeah, it tends to be. I think it tends to be um, for most people one of the main escapes from the mount position, right? I think in jujitsu we have kind of like a handful of escapes that you see people pr predominantly use. We have the the trap and roll, the umpa, which I filmed the whole course on before, yep. and how to master that technique. We have the elbow escape. Nowadays, uh, kipping has become yep, very, yep, very yep, popular. Yep, yep, uh, Dan Hur and his team have. have um, but still today, I think the elbow escape is tends to be, as I travel around and teach seminars, what most people rely on to get out. I agree. And sometimes what happens is against someone that knows how to keep a very tight mount with their knees tight, legs tight, that's really knows how to control the mount by using their legs. The elbow escape can be very difficult. And so there's some really important details on how it's that we get underneath the leg, right? How do we get underneath the leg? Because um, that's the other thing too. I think a lot of times people confuse the elbow escape with a hip escape. So that's the thing is like, sometimes people use those terms synonymously Which is and they're actually- different, by the way. Yeah, they're very different escapes, right? With um, the hip escape, what we're doing is we're shrimping. And if, uh, if you mount on top of me, Bernardo, right? Like with a, with, a, with a hip escape or a shrimping escape, a lot of times what we're doing is even though our hands are here, what I'm doing is I'm kind of shrimping to be able to basically move my hip. And the goal is for me to bring my knee through the middle, right? So I'm actually splitting the legs. So I shrimp and what happens is with the shrimp, Usually it opens the legs, and this normally works really well against people that are not pinching their knees tight, but if you go to pinch, if you're mounted, and you're just kind of pinch your knees a little bit, so just squeeze your legs together tight, yeah, and keep your feet tucked, right? So from here, if I try to shrimp out, it's hard. Yep. And that's why normally, against someone that's using more of a tighter mount, it's important to know how to do the elbow escape, because the elbow escape is not so much about me creating a big shrimp, it's about getting my leg underneath your leg. Yep. Right? So elbow escape, why do we call it the elbow escape is because in order to do the elbow escape, right, I'm using my elbow against your knee. Yep. Yeah. And the reason that it's so important to have my elbow here is because if you walk your knees up a little bit, yeah. So if you notice, my knee has to come underneath your foot. Yep. Right? Right now, because your knee is so much higher, like if you notice when I bring my leg, it's hard for me to get my leg underneath, Yep. right? And right now what you notice is every time I try to bring my leg underneath, do you feel how your toes are underneath my leg? Yep. So no matter how much I do this, I keep feel like I'm running into this wall, right? So let's talk about how to do the perfect elbow escape. Let's show everyone how we do the perfect elbow escape. So one of the most important things when we do the elbow escape is I have to get on my side, right? Very difficult to do it flat. And in order for me to get to my side, okay, I have to bring one hand through the middle, okay? So that's super important, bringing my hand through the middle. What bringing my hand through the middle does is it allows me to turn my shoulder, okay? Which allows me to turn my hip, which will allow me to turn my knee. So I need my body to turn, so that my actual legs can turn. Yeah, no, okay. th that's awesome, uh, Henry, because everybody learns that we should put this hand on the leg, this elbow here, but nobody learns the why we should do that. Yeah. Right, so that's very interesting. So it's, it's a body mechanic thing. And so what happens is, I see a lot of people, like if you cup underneath my head, Bernardo, yeah, if I try to do this, keep your legs heavy and tight, this is really difficult, right? If my arm is stuck on this side of the body, you can feel like it's super hard, even if I try to crunch, right? The second that my hand comes through the middle, I get it. Man, that's awesome. Right? You can feel that I'm able to create a little bit more of an angle. Look, ah, uh, you feel? Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. you see? Yeah, man, that's amazing. So, yeah. 
Um, that hand has to come through the middle, right? Okay. Sometimes you'll feel it's difficult um, where the person has a lot of weight on you, right? And so in order for me to beat that, all I have to do is if you put a lot of weight on me, right? I just have to do a couple bumps. Okay. Right? Now my hand comes through the middle. Keep your knees tight and legs tight. So yes, good. What you notice is my elbow is not next to my side. So I don't have my elbow connection. So what's important is, ah, you you place your elbow down. I no. need my elbow here. If you notice what that does is try to walk your knees up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important because now it doesn't allow you to walk your knees up. Yeah. Okay. The other important detail is not only getting to my side, but if you watch what this leg does, right? Keep your knees tight and keep, keep everything tight. Pinch your knees, keep your feet tucked, right? What happens is look at my toes, Bernardo. Yep. Right? The goal for me is to bring my leg underneath your leg. Yep. Right? So when I start to bend my knee, what direction is my knee going? Up. Yeah. So if you sit up for a second, if you think about this, yeah, just stay here, right? The direction my toes point dictate the which direction my knee bends. Okay. Okay. If my toes are pointed up, when I bend my knee, I go over your leg. Okay. Right? So what happens is I actually want to turn my toes to the ground. I get it. Because now your knee is going to go towards my foot. Yeah, because my knee goes towards the ground. And basically from here, right? All I do is as I start to bend my knee, you feel that? Yeah. So what's crazy is keep your legs tight, knees tight. Yep. Boom. Okay. So look, I turn my toes towards the ground and look, as I bend my, what you'll notice is as my knee starts to come up, do you see how your yep. leg starts to come out? There's a certain point where you kind of lose mobility here yeah. and I start to come underneath. Yeah. And I feel almost like your knees is sneaking in underneath my foot. Yeah. So that's the thing is not only do I need to get to my side, but I actually want to turn my toes towards the ground. Do you yep. feel that? Yep. Keep your legs tight. Keep your legs tight. Yeah. And with these toes pointing uh, towards the ground, what you can feel is as I start to bring my knee, do you see? Yep. And now this is nice because as my legs start to come underneath, all we do is elbow and knee together. Man, that's awesome. To be able to get. And you're there. Right? Yeah. No, the in Jiu Jitsu, I get fascinated by those very small details that nobody is thinking about. There's a chance people are doing it, but they never thought about it. And then the time that you really need it, and for some reason you cannot do it, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Anymore. And so that's kind of always the, the battle um, for a lot of people is how do we get that leg underneath? So if you lay down, right, um, and you do, you're going to, uh, do you like to elbow skip to this side or that side? This you work on my left side. side. Yeah. Okay, so I do both, but normally this side. Yeah. So if I'm here and I'm keeping a tight mount, you see how my knees are tight and I'm keeping yep. my feet tucked and you have your elbow, like just you straightening your leg and flattening your leg. Do you feel how my toes are underneath? Yeah. So as long as you try to bring your leg up, try to elbow skate right now, right? Yep. You feel it stuck, right? Yep. But if you turn your toes to the ground, Ah, I can feel it. I can feel it. You feel how my toes, my, my your knees. knees in kind of. So, so first, so sorry, sorry. Instead of having the toes pointing up, instead of having the toes, the toes pointing sideways, you always want to go like. Yes, you feel how. So in look, look at diagonal. my toes. Do you feel how you've taken away that gap? Uh, so turn your toes to the ground, right? Keep this elbow here, and now just slowly start to bring your knee up. There, you see that? Yeah, I got it. Oh, so awesome. what's crazy is is. The angle of this leg, if of course it, it depends on how good the guy is that's yeah. mounting you, right? How good, how tight their mount is. But against guys that know how to keep a tight mount where they're really keeping their knees tight and their feet tucked, yeah. if you don't turn your toes to the ground, yes, you see what you just did? Yeah. Now keep yeah. going. See? It's see how it pushes my foot out? Right. Almost goes like, you know, like. And if you notice, if you turn your toes a little bit up, so go back. Go, if you turn your toes a little bit up and you try to do it, try to do it now. So even though your yeah, elbow's in the right uh, place, even though your hand's here. Yeah, my, my knee doesn't make sense, yeah. So I gotta go like. Yeah, there, 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 see? Yeah. Easy. Yeah, that's right. awesome. So that's something that a lot of people don't know is the angle, when I go for my elbow skate, right? The angle that I actually point my foot is super important because a lot of times if my leg is like this, especially when people are keeping a tight mount, what you notice is their toes can tuck underneath my yep. my knee. And the more that I bring my knee up, it just ends up sliding over the toes. It just ends up sliding up the foot, yep. right? 
So the goal is, how do I take away this space? So yeah. you see what I did? did by did, turning did zing on the ground. Almost yeah, like. by turning my knee to the ground, basically I take away this gap, yeah. which allows people to get their toes underneath. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. a lot of times I see people struggling, struggling, struggling. And you're removing all this gap here, right? Eh? Exactly. Oh, yeah. I take away that gap. And then when I, when I do it, I'm actually scraping the ground. So yeah. it basically like, slides underneath. Yeah. And so it almost fights against the ankle. And basically as their leg goes up, there's a certain yeah. point where you notice you kind of lose mobility of your hip okay. and your leg will just pop over oh, my leg. Yeah, yeah. It's fun because it's pretty much the same principle, gi and no gi, right? Right. It doesn't matter. I don't have to have a gi. I don't need yeah. a grip. Um, and the cool thing is too is um, I don't need to. So a lot of people talk about when they do their, their um, elbow escape, they bring the foot over and trap and pull the foot. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I see. Right? So the problem with that is too, again, um, against, and so the reason I got so good with this is because um, training at Hickson's for so many years, that was Hickson's, one of his strongest positions. The mount position. The mount right? position, yeah. right? So yeah. everyone got really good at being able to maintain the mount. Everyone had a really, really tight mount. Everyone knew how to use yeah, their legs. And that escape to the went up. Yes, and so we have to really be yeah. precise with our ability to escape. We have to, yeah. the technique has to be perfect enabled in order to be able to get out of someone that really has a tight mount. So if you lay down again, right? Because a lot of people try to, um, cause you do this side, right? What you'll notice is, even if you try to bring your foot over, like even if you get this leg fat and you try to bring this foot over and try to hook my foot, right? So bring, yep, hook it and pull it over. If yeah, I'm tucked underneath yeah, you, it's really it's hard. hard. Even if I'm down here, yeah. right? If you try to, yeah, especially hard. if I keep weighting oh. this foot. Uh, yeah, I like yeah, it. Uh, 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 see, see I'm, it's already I'm coming out. The ground, kind yes, of. so there you're already scraping out, right? Yeah. You can already see you, you kind of beat yeah. my leg. So oh, I love it. that little detail makes all of the difference in the world. Yeah, I love Just it. I love it. Turning your toes to the ground so that yeah. we can basically get underneath the leg and not kind of keep sliding up that ramp, which is their toes. Yeah. Well, Harry, we were just talking about that. That uh, it fascinates me how like there are very few instructors that can do that. They can take one subject, not even one subject, one position in jiu-jitsu, and create a course of hours of that position. You are you are one of them. So yeah, uh, it, it's amazing like how you can take one move and build like a pretty much you know, like a that that comes from really the idea of mastering the basics got it right like in the beginning when we first learned start learning jiu-jitsu we all learn the techniques yeah right we all learn how to do a move but the idea is how do we get so good at the move that we can do it at the highest level yep. right and i think when you look at the guys that are the best in the world and the guys that have let's say the last three generations, the guys that have been considered by many the goats, yep. I think you look at Hickson, and then probably after Hickson's generation, Hodger, yep. right? And then now after Hodger's generation, you see Gordon, yep. right? I think what you can notice the similarity between all of them is that these guys have basically gotten so good at the basic techniques because when I watch Hickson train, he was always very basic, very fundamental. If you watch yep. Harder's, everyone says, man, he does the basics at the highest level. <laughs> and even Gordon, you know, he can write down, I'm gonna catch this guy in a triangle, and he does it, right? Triangle, it's not, not even about fancy submission that someone invented, right? it's triangle. Well, he gets to the oh. mount, he passes the guard, gets to the mount, gets oh. gift wraps, takes the back, and finishes with a rear oh. naked choke, right? Like, and so he's able to implement the basics. These guys are able to implement the basics at the highest level. Right? I always say, like, if you look at the Hodger's last match with Buchecha, he finished Buchecha under two minutes after it hit the ground. Yep. He pulled guard, Cold guard, arm drag yep. to the back, and then bow and arrow choke. Yep. So many of us know how to do that series by the time we're a blue belt, right? We yep. know how to pull guard, yep. kind of know how to do an arm drag, take the back, and, and then a bow and arrow choke. Yeah. Maybe even white belt, like why about three or four stripes, you might be there. How many people can do that to Buchecha? Yeah, no, I agree. Right? I fully agree. So that's the idea is how do we take these basic techniques and really master them? Because what happens in training is, as we start training, we try to do the techniques, people are always gonna try to resist us. They're yep. always gonna try to create problems for us. And so can we still, implement the technique can we still execute the techniques even with all of the problems that people create yep. and the best guys in the world have done the technique so many times they know how to shut down and basically 
surpass all of the problems so that they can still do the technique. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I fully agree. And uh, and uh, I think this is what makes Jiu Jitsu a very enthusiastic sport because you're always learning new stuff, but you also should never forget the, the old stuff because uh, if you master the old stuff, that's all you need, kind of. Yeah. Well, the basics work and the basics work at the highest level. Um, and, you know, if you see, like I mentioned, the, the last three guys, I mean, these guys, Hickson, Hodger, Gordon, um, they're not just a little bit better than, you know, these guys are better by a huge margin. I agree. Right? I agree. And so if you think about it, like, like for Hodger to come out of retirement and do what he did yep. after many years of not competing in the gi, right? For these guys to be able to do what they did, and I watched Hickson do the same thing in his 30, when he was in his late 30s and 40s to all of the greats, you yeah. know, Faber Gugel and all of the, you know, there's so many black belt world champions that had the opportunity to train with him. And they said, man, I felt like a white belt. I felt like I didn't know anything. I felt like he, I didn't know jujitsu when I trained with him. For these guys to be able to do what they are able to do, it's because they've spent the time really mastering these fundamentals and mastering the basics, right? They can do it regardless of, uh, no, I've, even if you try to stop them, they're still going to do it. I fully agree. And uh, guys, Henry just shot an entire instructional all about elbow escape. So pretty much what we're talking about here, like one basic position that everybody knows and how to master that move. And it's going to be at bggfanatics.com very soon. By the time you're watching, probably it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And uh, thank you, Henry. Thanks, Bernardo. Awesome. Thank you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.